Hi, this is Derek from Voicey Cylinder Head Services. Uh, we're going to tear down these two Subaru heads. They're out of a uh, single overhead cam Subaru, well, out of a Subaru Outback 2008 uh, with the single overhead cam variable valve timing VVT uh, deals here. Um, so we're just gonna pull the springs first, um, get the valves in the basket so we can get them cleaned up. We're gonna pop this cap off and uh, look at the cam bearing surface and kind of look over the whole thing and see what needs to be taken care of in this uh, rebuild. So over here we got our machine where we uh, take out our keepers and uh, we're gonna do that now. Alright, so this just pushes down the retainer, and sometimes we have to tap on the valve. But yeah, always remember to put your safety equipment on. It's very important to have safety equipment. You don't want to poke your eye out. So, alright, this thing here goes down and touches the retainer. This is the retainer. So we got the keepers in there, and then the valve stem in the center. Um, there's a groove on the valve that the keepers lock into. And there's an angle on the keepers that lock this retainer against the keepers, against the valve, and holds everything in place. So this thing is going to come down and uh, compress the oops, compress the spring down. Sometimes the valve will just dislodge there up by the keepers, which is ideal for taking it apart. It makes it easy. Sometimes we'll have to tap on the valve head with a hammer to dislodge it from the retainer. We're just going to pop through these and take it all apart. That one we had to tap a little bit with the hammer, but they're uh, not crazy worn out. Sometimes you really have to tap on it to break them free. Doesn't seem to be the case here. So tap, tap, pop it loose. Put all our keepers on a rag down here to keep from losing them all. It really sucks when you lose a keeper when you're going to put this thing back together because Pushes the valve out. You can tap on it with a hammer. Just lightly tap on it. You wouldn't want to bend or break a valve. We lost a keeper down in the cam journal area. We'll have to get that out here in a minute. All right, we got all the keepers dislodged from this head here. All the springs will just pop right out. Maybe some of the valves too. <laughs> so the valves, <clears throat> you know, over time they'll pound against the seat and they seal for, you know, 100, 150,000 miles or so. But as they do that, the seat contact widens out and it <clears throat> causes pits from the exhaust gas and the heat that's blown by it. Um, and over time, it'll wear that out to the point where it won't seal. I don't know how we, well, you can see that, but there's little pits and marks on the face of the valve. Um, and I mean, that's a pretty good worn, pretty good amount of wear there. I mean, definitely seen worse, but that's uh, that's probably like a hundred thousand on this car. You might guess based off that. So we're gonna <clears throat> take these keepers, <clears throat> excuse me, the springs and the retainers off. Toss those oily suckers in a basket. We'll pop the valves out as well. Good opportunity to see what a hundred thousand miles looks like on the valves. Um, this one looks about the same. You know, on this other cylinder head that we're about to take out, uh, it had a vacuum issue on the uh, front cylinder. And uh, I imagine we'll be able to see why when we pull those valves out. You know, the pitting might be a little more than these ones, or maybe a valve's bent or something like that. 
the intake valve, same kind of thing. They, they tend to hold up a heck of a lot better. And you can kind of see the ring where the seat has been contacting on those. There's no pits from, you know, extreme heat of the exhaust blowing by it. Um, they stay a little cooler and wear a little bit less, so that, that's good. <clears throat> In good shape. Pull the other valves. Take them out. We get a good chance to look at the seat here and see what's going on with them. Sometimes seats will pound in really dramatically where it's you can catch your edge on it and it's just completely wasted. It's not going to seal, that's for sure. Subarus, they tend to hold up pretty well. The turbos, not so much, but these single overhead cams hold up fairly well. You can see the kind of pitting and holes on the seat here. That's the same kind of wear we were seeing on the exhaust valve that happens on the seats too. Um, but that's just wear over time. <clears throat> Nothing that will prevent us from uh, rebuilding this head, that's for sure. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and whip this other one apart <clears throat> real quick um, on the machine. And then we'll uh, take off the cam cap assembly. All right, same thing, we're just going to pop all our springs in our basket, keep everything together. I mentioned how I lost a keeper in this head, I lost two of them on this one inside the, the cylinder head. We'll shake those out next. This is the cylinder that we were having those low vacuum numbers on. I'm going to look over the valve seat and see if there's any big signs of issues. There is kind of an edge here where you can feel on both sides of that seat where it's kind of got a carbon buildup. That could be part of the problem. It does look like there's some pitting and the whole thing's a little blackened. Um, so we're probably just worn out <clears throat> beyond those other ones just a little bit to the point where the uh, seat to valve contact is kind of getting a rounded edge instead of a nice solid flat to flat surface. Um, and that's going to cause some bad vacuum there. Um, usually, you know, the exhaust flames are going in here, and if it can blow by, it's going to burn that seat and make it weaker, and sometimes it'll burn a valve, which is, it'll, like, carve a hole into the side of it with the heat, like a plasma cutter. Um, <clears throat> all right. We're also going to put all our valves in this basket, clean those up, glass beads of carbon up, and grind the valves to see if they're in good enough shape to rebuild. Um, next time, oh, yeah, let's take a look at these seats as well. This is the problem cylinder right here. I don't see so much of an issue on this seat here, but this one you can definitely see some blackened areas, some pits. Um, it's definitely not the worst ever, but that's definitely the, the issue we were seeing with the vacuum check gun in our last video. Um, and that's something that we'll fix uh, during the rebuild. I'm going to pull these valve stem seals off. They're a little crispy um, and hard. They should be pretty malleable rubber there. Um, but I don't know if you can really see. If I poke this thing, it doesn't really move. It's hard. It's not quite crispy, but it's getting there. I mean, that's that's a good uh, sign of something that's like 100,000 100, miles on it. You know, these things just wear down and go beyond their life. I mean, we, we sell blue Viton valve stem seals that, that hold up to a lot better heat and uh, last a lot longer than these uh, polyurethane valve stem seals that come with the 
factory head, but um, yeah. All right, we're gonna pull these valve stem seals off, pull the uh, spring shim out from the bottom of the spring area, and uh, then we can pull off this cap and take a look at the cam, see if there's any damage we couldn't see from our earlier pre-inspection. You know, while I'm doing this, I'm always looking out for any kind of broken off bits of aluminum, like if this chunk was snapped off or if anything else was snapped off, you know, this head could get condemned. Because um, if it doesn't have certain aspects to it or crucial components, parts to it are broken off, then you're going to get it on the car and they're just going to not work. They're not going to hold the right bolts and pieces to make the car function. So. Just always keep your eye out for something like that. This is what the spring shim looks like. It also it protects the aluminum casting from the bottom of the spring as it moves up and down. And then also it holds this spring in place from shaking all about. That's what that bump is for to kind of locate this spring in the center of the valve area, guide area. Um, we're pull all those out. Then we can pull this cap off. It just takes a little tiny magnet to pull these things off. It doesn't take anything crazy. This is probably one of the weaker magnets we have at the shop and it seems to do just fine. Sometimes when the oil hasn't been changed in them for long periods of time, it gets pretty gooey, nasty, and that'll lock those things in place. Um, I'm gonna go grab a couple tools here to zap these out and then we'll pull that cap off. This takes a uh, Torx bit, a TP40, that fits into these bolts here, there's six per head, and then a, uh, let's see, a five millimeter Allen, take off the eight other bolts, and then just a 10 millimeter socket, take off these front two. Take those front two off first. We'll use an air tool uh, to pop out the Torx and the Allen bolts. I think that air tool might be getting a little old. We've, been ha we've had it around for probably 10 years. <coughs> Seen better days. <coughs> now onto the Allens, there's eight of these. <coughs>
<clears throat> I never did address those keepers that fell down. I did find two of them right here. There might be another one lost in here somewhere. We will uh, hopefully find that last one. And I'll just pull all these bolts and I'll stick them in a basket as well. We'll clean them up. Get all the dirt and debris off of them. All right, these things are sealed down pretty good. Um, sometimes we've seen oil leaks that'll happen, you know, off the side of the exhaust, the exhaust side in between that seam there. You can see a little blob of gasket that's squished out from the original seam. Um, <clears throat> in situations like that, when we peel these off, we can take a look and kind of see what the issue was, if it had a sufficient amount of gasket on it, or, uh, you know what the issue was maybe it just wore out but there's a good ledge right here we can pop this um, cover off on right here and here gives us a good point to pry on we'll try not to pry too much on the seal area because you wouldn't want to damage the aluminum beyond being able to seal when we're all said and done this does look like subaru original gasket and that's not one of the problems we had an oil leak before but you can tell this thing it's just crispy and breaks right apart. Um, it's pretty old. Probably, like I said, about 100,000 miles or so, maybe a little more. Um, there's also the other side here, gasket that's stuck on here. Usually comes off pretty easy when it's old and brittle. Um, but we're going to take a look at the uh, cam bearing surfaces, make sure there's no problems there. The cam seems to be all right looking at the, the bearing surface. It spins smoothly. Um, so we'll pop that out, set it in a basket, clean that up later. And we get a chance to look at the bottom side of the bearings here, as well as the top casing of the bearing over here. Usually if you see a little bit of damage on the cam in a journal or one of the journals themselves, there's usually corresponding damage to the top and to the cam um, all around pretty much. These ones look really nice. I don't see any signs of extreme wear or damage. Um, so they'll be just fine. Let's go ahead and pop this other one apart. Imagine it should be in the same shape. The cam spins freely. There we go. Nice and clean and shiny. No damage or marks. Sometimes if uh, bearing material shoots through the oil system here and gets up to the bearing, you'll have just rings all the way around on the bearing. You can usually scratch it with your finger and you'll just, you know, you can hear it like scratching a bastard file or something. Um, or a record. The cam looks good. There's no damage to the lobes. Everything looks pretty sharp. <clears throat> Pop that out, put it in our basket. Check this bearing surface. Everything looks good there as well. Um, another thing I would check, or I'm going to check, is the uh, guide clearance. This is kind of a uh, pre check. We got a more thorough method to do this, but this kind of gives us an idea of how bad it is. Um, we'll put an exhaust valve into one of the exhaust guides and then just wiggle it back and forth. I mean, there's a there's a little tiny amount of wiggle there. It should have about a thousand, thousand and a half clearance from uh, from the valve stem to the guide inside diameter. And uh, if it's like clunking back and forth like that when it's all the way in here, then we know we have an issue with the guide and we're going to have to change that guide out before we can uh, cut the seat, finish the repair. On these cylinder heads though, we do know that the guides slip uh, very commonly, um, especially when they overheat. The aluminum expands different than the cast iron guide and it just loosens it up enough for one of those to slide out um, up towards the valve face here. And then the valve stem seal will pop off the back side. It'll just pop out and float there um, and you'll start burning oil and all, all sorts of issues. So what our fix is for that, is we got <coughs> replacement guides for this thing. It's like 2000s difference oversized guide diameter, outside diameter. So we'll just we'll just change out all the exhaust guides on pretty much all the single overhead cans that we do. Um, but that pretty well concludes our video on tearing down the cylinder head. Um, <coughs> we're gonna have to clean up and clean up all the parts, grind the valves and move forward uh, with the valve grinder to rebuild these heads. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching this video. Go ahead and hit our subscribe button. 
Uh, like it if you liked our video, hit our bell notification button so you get all our notifications. And remember, it's all in your head.